What's going on guys, it's Orange Team, ran right to my channel, and today, well, late tonight, actually, I should have done this earlier, well, yesterday, already, last night, but, um, whatever, I'm gonna do this at, super late at night, sometimes, but, um, yeah, A.W. Dynamite, the aftermath of Revolution, this past Sunday was fucking badass, that pay-per-view, it was, um, then Dynamite tonight. Holy shit, bunch of surprises, a little bit, but, well, one was important, so, um, which was Jeff Hardy debut on AEW Dynamite, so, yeah, that was an awesome moment. Yeah, that was the important one. Holy shit, I was like, what the f When his music hit, the do -do 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 -do, you know, like that and stuff, and, um, man, it was good. It was fucking badass. Finally, the Harder Boys are back together. Yep. So, yeah, a little, um, turn tonight and stuff. You know, but, yeah. Alright, so let's get to it then. <coughs> Excuse me. Chris Jericho, uh, okay, the show kicked off with Chris Jericho addresses Eddie Kingston after Chris Jericho lost um, to Eddie Kingston, so, or from Eddie Kingston, whatever anyone wants to say, it, but, yeah. Anyways, here we go. Chris Jericho kicked off Wednesday's show by putting over his match with Eddie Kingston at Revolution. He said it awakened something in him. That he thought was gone, but admitted frustration when he refused to shake Kingston's hand per his pre-match promise. He called his rival out and Matt King obliged, entering the arena to chance of his name. Kingston admitted <coughs> that Friday before the preview, he wanted to no show him he gave in to demons that had played him throughout his life. The only reason he did not, the four separate people that told him his player's tri uh, Tribune article has saved, his life, saved their lives. He said he hopes he made them proud. And he then asked Jericho what haunts him and prevent him from shaking his hand at Revolution. Jericho admitted he was wrong and shook Kingston's hand in, hand in time for 2.0 and Daniel Garcia to attack. Santana and Ortiz rushed to, rushed the ring, made the save, only for Jericho to attack his inner circle teammates with a baseball bat. Jay Hager arrived, questioning Jericho's actions before showing his true col tr true colors and joining in on the assault. Jericho added a bat shot to the head of Kingston, and Hager drove through the timekeeper's table at ringside. The uh, egotistical Demo God introduced fans to the Jericho ap uh, Appreciation Society to close out the segment. And then he says at the end, he goes, Now that's what you call entertainment. I think. So, yeah. Alright, let's get to the first match. So, yeah, Chris Jericho turned heel, as always. So, yeah. <clears throat> and Jake Hager also. So, yeah. Alright, AEW World Championship match. The, this is the first match. Heyman Page versus Dante Martin. Fresh off a successful defense of his AEW Championship against Cole at Revolution. <clears throat> Heyman Adam Cole put the top prize and the company on the line once again. Defending against top flights Dante Martin. Page overcame a... Uh, uh, valiant, sorry, um, effort from Martin shaking off a series of, of reversals and counters late before turning the breakout star of 2021 inside out with a buckshot lariat for the win and success, successful title defense. Tony Schiavone joined Page in the ring for a promo following the win. Page called Martin back into the ring the match <coughs> and showed him respect for his client. <clears throat> As a singles wrestler and the fight he just gave the road champ, Amco interrupted the proceedings and called Page's victory at Revolution a fluke. 
Cole issued a challenge for a six-man tag team match, teasing partners that know Paige better than he knows himself. The heel said he will not sub until he wins the world title. So yeah, Paige defeated Mark Martin to retain the the title. <clears throat> All right, let's get to the second match. <clears throat> John Moxley and Brian Danielson versus Drake Ma- Drake and Anthony Henry. So yeah, um, John Moxley and Dan Bri- uh, Brian Danielson had um, uh, William Regal uh, at ringside with them. So yeah, <clears throat> so here you go. After a bloody physical match at Revolution, John Moxley and Brian Danielson untitled under the leadership of William Regal to bow the work horsemen's J.D. Drake, J.D. Drake and Anthony Henry, <clears throat> Moxley and Danielson. Dominant and extended squash unleashing hell on both Drake and Henry with their trademark physically and intensely. <clears throat> Moxie dropped Henry with a pair uh, dime shift on the arena floor while the American Dragon stomped away at the face of Drake and tapped him out to the uh, label lock. Tony Schiavone joined the victors and Regal in the ring for a pummel. Regal admitted that he knows he is not long for his for this role. He tearfully thanked Giovanni for helping him when he arrived in the United States. He created Danielson for his joining AW and put him over as a perfect wrestler. He put over his victory with both competitors and said now that the team is united, the rest of the AW roster better step up or get stepped on. So yeah, Moxie and Danielson defeated Drake and Henry. <clears throat> which is pretty good with William Regal on their side. So, yeah. <clears throat> Alright, let's get to the third match. Pack versus Wheeler Yuta. In a standby match announced after Paige versus Martin did not go full, the full 60 minutes, Death Triangle's Pack squared off with Bastard and Wheeler Yuta. The Bastard dominated the action, but Yuta appeared poised to mount a comeback Coming out of a commercial break, instead, Pack cut him off and rocked him with a stiff kick to the midsection. A suplex drove the fight out of Wheeler, but uh, Wheeler and the brut- brutalizer earned Pack the submission win. So yeah, Pack defeated uh, we- uh, we- Wheeler, which it was a short match, so kind of a short, but with the commercial break and stuff on the picture picture thing. So yeah. All right, emergency board meeting of the age of foe. On here it says the A H, the A H F O. On here, <coughs> so here we go. <coughs> Matt Hardy and Andrade met in the middle of the ring, flanked by Private Party, the Butcher, and the Blade for a special emergency board meeting of H F O. Hardy apologized for treating. Isaiah Cassie and Mark Quinn poorly and a minute that every time he puts a suit on, he turns into an asshole. With his status with Agent HFO up for a vote, Hardy fell victim to a beatdown by his teammates. Pirate Party Butcher Blade Jose and Andre beat down the future Hall of Famer, leaving him lying as booze rained down from the stands. Darby Allen and Stain made their way to the ring. Ready for a physical confrontation despite a numbers disadvantage, the face painted baby faces took the fight to the hills only to find themselves on the receiving end of a beatdown. Jeff Hardy, to the iconic Hardy Boys theme, theme music, made his AEW debut by rushing the ring and making the save for his brother, childhood hero, and fellow North Carolinian. The baby faces stood tall to close out the segment. A sense of disbelief and distrust among them. So yes, Jeff Hardy, said Matt Hardy, and man, it was good. The debut, it was fucking good. I enjoyed the hell out of that debut. All right, let's get, let's get to the next segment. Warlow speaks. Warlow joined Tony Schiavone for an in-ring promo addressing his victory in the face of the Revolution ladder match and his portrayal of MJF. The war dog admitted that he grew up poor and taking that job with the salt of the earth would allow him to get 
of food in the door and some money to support his family a need for financial stability did not give mjf an excuse to embarrass humiliate mistreat and ber berate warlow at revolution he broke off the business relationship with mjf and now he is free his only focus is on the tnt championship and now aw is warlow's world so yeah that was it it was a short one so yeah it was good all right the fourth match Six. yeah we're almost finished guys all right this is the fourth match aw tag team championship match Jurassic express versus the acclaimed <clears throat> Jungle Boy and Lucasaurus retained the AEW Tag Team Championship at Revolution, narrowly Ner defeating the Young Bucks and Red Dragon in a three-way dance. When St. Jurassic Express defended again this time against Anthony Bowens and Max Caster of the Acclaim, the heels appeared to have the titles within reach late in the match, working over Jungle Boy while the mask Big man recovered on the floor. A well timed save by Luchasaurus pre preserved his team's reign. Even after having the heels boom box kicked into his face, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy still managed to score the victory and retain the house to the delight of the fans. Alright, the fifth match Thunder Rosa versus uh, Layla Hirsch. <coughs> Alright, Layla. Legit Leia Hirsch scored the biggest win of her AW career during the Revolution buy-in show, defeating Chris Stanlander in singles competition Wednesday. She thought she sought to continue those winning ways as she squared off with Donna Rosa. Rosa seeking to shake off an AW Women's Championship loss to Dr. Britt Baker on the pay-per-view main show fought from underneath for the majority of the bout. With the face painted no former number one contender building momentum, Hurst attempted to use an exposed turnbuckle to her advantage. Brev Velvet arrived and prevented her from doing so. Back in the ring, Rosa took off an armbar and delivered the fire thunder driver for the win. After the match, Tony Giovanni revealed Rosa would challenge Baker next week in her hometown of San Antonio, Texas, in a steel cage match. Baker cried conspiracy and vowed to retain in a promo conducted backstage. So yeah. Alright, the main event. This is the sixth match. So yeah, the main event. TNT Championship match. Sammy Guevara versus Scorpio Sky. Yeah, main event. <clears throat> Dan Lambert and Ethan Page accompanying Scorpio Sky to the square circle for a TNT Opportunity against the Spanish God, Sammy Guevara, and Wednesday's main, Wednesday's main event. Guevara took the first risk of the night, delivering a six, uh, six thirty splash, but coming up empty as a, as he crashed through the table at ringside. Doc Sampson and and girlfriend Ty Conte rushed to check on the champion as Sky celebrated during the commercial break. The champion defiant attempted to fight through the agonizing pain in his ribs sky overwhelmed him or overwhelmed him then taunted conte for a good measure conte came face to face with page uh van zant uh, if you said last name i'm sorry um at ringside while Guevara f found himself on the defensive excalibur reminding viewers that sky had not lost in singles action in 364 days Guevara de delivered a springboard cut cutter for a near fall. <clears throat> the split second hesitation costing him the champ added the GTH moments later, but Sky Alert rolled underneath the rope. Uh, Guevara tried for the shooting star press, but Sky got the knees up. Lambert provided a distraction, but Van Zant Zana Van Zana if I'm saying that correct, I'm sorry. Uh, laid out Conte at ringside and Sky put Guevara away with the TKO. As the show went off the air, Van Zant, Van Zant how you want to say it? I'm sorry, I already suck at names. Um, signed her AW contract and stood tall alongside her heel Peters. So yeah, Scorpio Sky defeated Sammy Guevara to win the TNT Championship. So yeah, Paige is now all elite. Yep. 
So yeah, Sword made a uh, little debut by signing contract, and then Jeff Hardy, and then Paige, not Paige from WWE. So uh, this is this is a different Paige um, that's in AEW right now. So yeah, <clears throat> so yeah, it was good tonight. Oh, well, yesterday night. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it was good. And I enjoyed it. Happy Jeff Hardy is there. Yep. So, anyways. That was it. And I'll see you all in the next video. Laters.